There is one special city in the Netherlands with a unique atmosphere created by terrace restaurants and promenades right at water level along the canals, producing a delightful ambiance in a historic setting, and yet also lined with modern shops and restaurants and bars. It's this wonderful split-level setting with pedestrian streets above and down below by the canals, you've got the restaurants on their terraces. Really quite special. And there are many other delightful aspects to the city of Utrecht. It's the fourth largest city in the Netherlands and it's got the oldest university. And they claim the second largest collection of historic medieval buildings, second only to Amsterdam. Standing high above it all is the tallest church tower in the country. Then add to the mix typical Dutch ingredients of friendly people with a relaxed, tolerant attitude, always ranked high in global indexes of happiness and quality of life, bicycles zooming by, great beer, wonderful food, and a compact pedestrian historic zone riddled with picturesque canals. This is a place you would love to visit, as we'll show you in this detailed travel guide. No, we're not in Venice, but sometimes it sure feels that way in these watery cities of the Netherlands. And in fact, here in Utrecht, you couldn't get even closer to the water than practically any place in Venice itself because of these terraces that extend along the main canal through the heart of Utrecht, reaching four kilometers in length. These were originally loading docks back in the Middle Ages. In those days, the main harbor was right here in the center of town, which made it very convenient for the busy trade network. Their warehouses were right along this terrace, which have been mostly converted now to lovely restaurants. And just above is this lively pedestrian shopping street with modern stores and more restaurants and lots of people out walking. It has created a very unusual split-level city. You just don't see this in very many other places in the world. It is the defining characteristic of the city of Utrecht. In this aerial view from Google Earth, we can see how it's all about this one section of curved canal with those terraces and tables and shops and trees. And it's the magical neighborhood in the heart of town. This is the actual downtown of the city, the place where locals come to shop and take a stroll, see their friends, have a drink, or just walk on their way to work while it's also the scenic and historic part of town for the visitor, although you'll notice there don't seem to be all that many tourists around, partly because I'm here in the off season in September, and also because Utrecht is just not really high on the radar for tourists, and that makes it all the more desirable a place to visit. It's loaded with authentic charm, proclaimed by Lonely Planet as one of the world's top 10 unsung places, undiscovered, and ranked by the BBC as one of the world's happiest places. You will find it worthwhile to wander around some other parts of the central historic area, certainly the little side lanes and into the church and some of the museums, but you'll always be coming back to this one spot along the canals. It is just so magical. And during the program, we'll be taking you back here again and again with sunshine or cloudy days in the morning or at night when it gets even busier with people sitting outside enjoying dinner. It's always fun to be here. Utrecht is in the heart of the Netherlands and it truly is one of the great cities of Europe to come and visit. It's not as well known as some other Dutch cities like Delft perhaps or even Leiden and Rotterdam but you might find it the most charming of all cities in the country. And it's been ranked as one of the top 10 places to visit by various sources, and it certainly is worthwhile. It's a city of history. It's a city of canals, a city of old brick buildings. There's lots of cafes, there are several museums, and just lovely streets for walking. You can also take the canal boat ride when you're here in Utrecht. We'll also explore the amazing cathedral, 
but we'll spend most of our time just relaxing and enjoying the old canal, the Odegrak, right in the heart of the historic center with beautifully preserved buildings, some dating back many centuries, experiencing the Dutch good life at its very best. But hang on, before we get too sentimental and think this is a historic artifact, an ancient city that's trapped in amber, some kind of old-fashioned museum exhibit of the Middle Ages with nothing but old buildings, let's realize this is a modern city. Population of 320,000 makes it the fourth biggest city in the country. And there is a lot of cutting edge activity going on here. The biggest and oldest university in the country. Large banks are headquartered here. And it's the main crossroads of the Dutch railroad system. When you look at the big picture, you'll see that most of the buildings in the metropolitan area are not like those old brick structures you see along the canals. There is another downtown, the more modern side of the city. A lot of shops and busy streets with cars. Yeah, it's not a pedestrian zone in the other part of modern downtown. A lot of bicycles, of course, going by. Always in the Netherlands, it's bicycles. That's the main system of transportation. Let's back up and take it from the top. When you arrive in Utrecht, you're probably coming in by train. It's a very good way to get here. Travel by train is the best way to get around the country. You don't really need to drive. The Dutch have one of the world's best rail systems. It's clean, efficient, prompt, not expensive, always on time. The Dutch make it very easy to use their transportation system with a single card. It's the OV chip card. You just tap it on the ticket reader as you're boarding and then you tap it again once you get off. And that'll work on trains and buses and trams, local or intercity. It's a phenomenal system. The cards are widely available. You can purchase them in some tobacco stores, at the airport upon arrival, at each train station. It's one more reason that visiting the Netherlands is so enjoyable. The rail stations are also easy to navigate and you'll be walking right through the heart of this modern train station, state-of-the-art facilities, and then it will lead you right into a modern shopping mall, Hoog Katerina, which recently greatly expanded in size, becoming the largest shopping mall in the Netherlands with 180 stores and getting 26 million annual visitors. And the neighborhood all around it and the train station have been undergoing a modernization transformation into a new part of the city. Just keep walking and follow the signs and you will sure enough end up out on the modern streets. And then it's a couple blocks walk through a modern section. This too is an interesting neighborhood of the city. Close enough, it's only a few blocks from the train station into the old historic part of town. So this is a great place to stay. Plenty of restaurants and convenience stores to take care of you. It's where nearly all of the hotels are located. I enjoyed the Apollo Hotel. Clean, simple, not expensive, and just two blocks from the old part of town with the canals. Walking from the train station to the canal, as shown on the map, is just about 800 meters, a quick walk. And then we'll walk a little bit more along that modern street before plunging into the heart of the old town along the canal, have a look at some side pedestrian lanes, into the historic center with shops and restaurants, and then on to the cathedral. A very easy route. We'll continue along this busy street for several blocks, show you a bit of the modern side of the city. It's the major street coming through the central city. Very busy with bicycles, as you see. Pedaling is a way of life here. It's the basic means of transport. They're not pedaling for exercise, but to get somewhere. It's the basic vehicle of the country. Cycling has always been a tradition here, but it really took off in the 1970s with a lot of support from the government in terms of bike lanes to provide an alternative to driving cars. It's quite safe, even for visitors, so you might consider renting a bike for a day to pedal around. That busy street continues past Janskirk, originally built in the 11th century and then rebuilt in the 20th century. 
with a busy bus station out front and some cozy sidewalk cafes around this neighborhood. And the street then continues for about another kilometer with more shops all along the way. It's really quite a nice commercial street, but no canals, so we're not going that far. Turning around to go back into the old town. With the cathedral looming large at the end of this street, we'll go inside it at the end of the program after we have another look at the Odegraaf, that charming canal in the heart of town. Easily reached directly from that busy street on a staircase that comes down from this old brick bridge down to the water's edge. It's a different world when you're at this lower level of the canal, so close to the modern city and yet centuries apart. It's quiet, no cars, not even any bicycles, just a few boats going by, some pedestrians, and mostly people sitting at the tables enjoying a drink or a meal. We'll take a closer look at this most interesting section of the old canal in the heart of town. This popular portion is only about 500 meters in length. Canals are still used for transportation of goods, although this, of course, is but a shadow of the former glory when this canal was a major thoroughfare. Now most of the boat activity is for fun. It's for tourists in their glass top tour boats. It's for kayakers who rent a little boat and paddle around for a couple of hours. One company has their shop right here in the Central Canal area. You can rent one of these kayaks, or they call them canoes, for six euro per hour. Or you could rent it for all day for 14 euro, or anything in between. It's big on TripAdvisor. They give it an excellent rating. One customer said, we loved it. Spent five hours, including a break, canoeing along the Utrecht canals. Another person called it a wonderful change of pace after walking, kayaking through the city canals and outside the city, through the smaller canals surrounded by nature. Highly recommended. You don't need any paddling experience or physical conditioning even to come out here and enjoy paddling around. But you might want to make a reservation with the boat company ahead of time because they do get busy and might be sold out if you just show up without a booking. Tourists are not the only ones having fun on the water. It's for locals who very much enjoy this ambiance on their own personal boats having parties. Notice the casual skipper enjoying his meal with the rest of the gang on autopilot. There's no doubt the Dutch people love their canals. It's like an open parkland for them, a major place of recreation, a deep part of their heritage and history. Visitors can also join a boat tour with catered meals and drinks in the open air. Very popular option. Easily arranged with tour companies as an alternative to that glass top boat. But most visitors love that typical excursion boat experience that you'll find in nearly all major Dutch cities. Or you can rent a small electric boat and just go cruise around on your own. Typical prices are about 40 euro an hour for a boat that'll hold up to six people. Or how about cruising along on a stand-up paddle board? Everything can be arranged here in the Netherlands. It's a country that does business. They are ready to please the customer, anything you want. And then there are some utilitarian boats, like the garbage boat. Something like in Venice, where everything is done on the water. We've been looking at the Odegracht, the old canal. It's a branch of the Rhine River. Here it's sometimes called the Crooked Rhine. It's one of many branches of the Great Rhine that spreads out in a delta across much of the southwest part of the Netherlands. Utrecht became one of the great market towns of the Middle Ages because of its position in the center of the country along the Rhine. This enabled the early boat traffic to connect in many directions throughout, south into the heart of Europe, up to the North Sea, and across the country from Amsterdam to Rotterdam. In that era long before railroads and easy land transportation, these watery highways gave the Netherlands a big advantage in global trade. And now they provide us with a delightful scenic attraction as we sit at table having a drink, enjoying the lively waterfront activities. You never know what's going to pop up next. These terraces function as the outdoor living room of the city. 
But how did they come to be? Why are these terraces here and not found anywhere else in the country? Part of the reason is that Utrecht is above sea level, more so than many of the other Dutch cities, and therefore there's a drop down to the level of the water from street level. In the old days, large merchant houses were constructed along the canal above the banks, built upon barrel vaulted cellars down below to provide a secure foundation. And it's those cellars that are now these restaurants that line the canal. Earlier, they were used as storehouses or even residences. And these restaurant terraces, which even today are called wharves, were the docking and loading platforms for the cargo coming through town. And while the outdoor restaurants have a delightful ambience, you want to be sure to step inside some of these restaurants as well to get that historic feeling of the barrel vaulted stone structure. Many of them beautifully renovated with modern and historic touches that really create a lovely atmosphere for dining. Even if you're not eating, you're certainly always welcome to step into a restaurant, ask if you can have a look around. They will never mind. Figuring that you just might want to sit down. Once you see how attractive it looks and smells, check the menu, have a bite. And then at night, this same canal area gets even more lively, of course, with all of the young people in this city. It is a university town, remember, with nearly 30,000 students. So there are going to be plenty of people out in the evening and well into the night. Plus, the lighting is so beautiful at twilight. You catch that deep blue sky, Nice for the eyes and for the camera. They have some fun with special lighting effects in the city at night, lighting up the bridges with changing shades of color. And they've got several illuminated passageways, a light tunnel that you can walk through. It's kind of a psychedelic light show as you walk along. This Gansenmark tunnel has a history going back to the old days when horse carts rode through this passage from the city center down to the wharfs where freight was loaded and unloaded. So they didn't have to carry cargo down the staircases. And now it's been converted into this amazing light show by an artist named Eric Grun, one of many local and international artists who use light as their medium of expression. City Hall gets lit up as well. It's all part of this program called Trajectum Lumen. It's maintained by the government of the city of Utrecht, all free and open to the public every day of the year from sunset until midnight. You can also pay to include a guided walking tour where everything is explained and you don't miss anything that way. And you could even include a three course dinner package in the deal. Of course, many private businesses are also getting in the spirit of this movement and lighting up their own buildings. For comparison, here's how the same building looks during the daytime. Well, it's still a beautiful structure, but a little bit more magical in the twilight. Winkel van Zinkel not only is a nice cafe and tapa bar, but in the evening, it's a big music venue. So even more reason to consider that building at night. Admire those neoclassical karyatid statues seeming to hold up the roof. Well, we're right in the heart of the old town now. We've been walking along the Udegrat Canal into the very center of town. This stretch along the Udegrat for a couple of blocks as we approach City Hall has a nice cluster of interesting and high quality shops with a variety of kinds of things on sale for men and women and young and old. Way more interesting to be walking along a shopping street like this instead of inside a covered shopping mall. Growing flowers is an important part of their agricultural economy and they love to buy them and bring it on home. The shopping neighborhood does extend beyond the canal for a couple of blocks along both sides of the waters, making this an excellent place to meander. You'll certainly hear some music in the streets as you walk along from the various buskers, lovely accordion music. If you enjoy the music or stop to take a few pictures, you certainly want to give them a nice tip. The atmosphere of the old city center creates a perfect backdrop and environment for a day of shopping. And you might find some treasures in the cozy narrow streets that lead away from the canal.
Manufacture of fabrics used to be a major part of the Dutch economy, but that ended a long time ago. Sidewalk stands offer bargains on some imported goods. Of course, the major chain stores are here, but you'll also find a lot of independent boutiques featuring one-of-a-kind items. It's also a good place to sit down and have a beer and watch the passing parade of people. When you get hungry, you can do like the natives and line up at a lunch wagon for a delicious sandwich at low cost. The name of the lunch wagon is... Broodje Ben. Bretje Ben. This place is amazing. It is so popular. People are lined up, waiting patiently. It doesn't take that long, and these workers are very efficient, cranking out the sandwiches, delicious food, fresh ingredients, pretty healthy, and a good price. No wonder there's this long line every day waiting to get lunch. When you're ready for lunch in Utrecht, there's a lot of choices. There's restaurants on the side lanes, on the main street, and of course there's a lot of dining along the canal itself on the lower terrace, one of the things that makes this town so very special. Or you can just wing it and get a sandwich to go and have a picnic on the steps down here by the banks of the canal. Any way you do it, you're gonna have some good eating. And sandwiches are a very popular item here. You can buy your basic sandwich for three euro or get a fancy one for five euro. You'll see lots of people eating a sandwich standing or walking along on the street, lunch in hand. Dutch people are quite sociable, which makes them approachable if you'd like to strike up a conversation and they speak English. They're gregarious and friendly, so by all means, if you see a chance to talk with some locals, go for it. <laughs> you, you eat lunch standing up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we walk, eh? We have Sometimes less we time. <laughs> we have no time. Only 30 minutes <laughs> for work. <laughs> <laughs> Hard working. I love your city. Oh, this yeah. Utrecht is amazing. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. place. The Dutch are outgoing and friendly in a society with high levels of cooperation and mutual respect, in part because of their geography. It's a small country, it's densely populated, so people have to get along. There are always other people around, it seems. Another reason they're sociable is the way they get around. It's either walking or on a bicycle rather than being isolated as sole occupant of a private car as many modern travelers are. Very often you'll see people having a conversation as they pedal along next to each other. Another way that geography has brought the people together is their history of dealing with the water. About one-third of the country is below sea level and would be underwater if they didn't do something about it. So they have to work cooperatively to drain it and maintain it, building dikes and canals in a process that started about 700 years ago. Cooperation, it's really a hallmark of the Dutch personality. They cooperate with each other, whether it's sharing a sandwich or on the job site or in school or in the family. It's a very cooperative bunch of people and they have created an egalitarian society with a lot of economic equality among the population. They do not have the great disparities of wealth that you find in many other developed Western countries. And you know they're famous for being thrifty. You may call them frugal, but they are not stingy. They are not cheapskates. They've built a society that generously takes care of its population with abundant education support, healthcare and various kinds of social resources. But they do love those takeout sandwiches. You'll see the kiosks scattered around town. And then how about some gelato for dessert? We mentioned earlier that connection with Venice with all these canals. Well, here it is, a little touch of Italy. Reaching the city hall with the country's tallest church tower just beyond, part of the cathedral that we'll be visiting in just a few minutes, but first, some more restaurants. At this point, we've reached the canal's largest bridge, which forms a plaza serving as a crossroads in the center of the old town. A couple of streets extend beyond it, with many shops continuing for about five or six blocks and then gradually becoming more residential. 
And while you can still walk down a staircase to the water's edge here, it's only a short terrace, and the rest of the stretch of this block of the canal is no terrace at all, just straight down. There's basements down below, but they don't have any wharfs. A lot of shops up above, though. It's a great block for walking and shopping and eating. Coming right up, another bridge. Step onto it for a view back at City Hall and that nice row of shops. This bridge is a bustle of activities, as you'll see, with people out dining and walking around and shops all about it. Things are pretty close together here in Utrecht. For example, we've only walked about two kilometers from the train station to get to this point along the canal and doing a little bit of meandering. We have more to see, continuing a few blocks south along the canal, enjoying more shop fronts and restaurants. Then there's another little side bunch of shopping streets and over to the cathedral and another back canal. You could do it in a short period of time. You might even consider visiting Utrecht as a day trip, perhaps from Amsterdam. It's only a half an hour train ride from Amsterdam to get here. And you could spend a full day walking around and if you do that, by all means, stay here for the evening. You'll want to see those illuminations that we pointed out and have dinner at one of the lovely outdoor restaurants at the Weather's Fair. And then you can catch a train back to Amsterdam or to whatever your home base city might be. However, you will find that there is enough to see in Utrecht that a couple of days would be worthwhile. Then you can enjoy the boat ride, rent a canoe, go paddling around, do some shopping and just really take your time here and enjoy the place. We've walked a few blocks south of City Hall and over on the west bank of the Odegrach, discovering another lovely cluster of shops in little side lanes. This neighborhood is loosely considered still part of the museum district, even though the main museums are on the other side of the canal and a few blocks further south. This quarter has a relaxed attitude just across the canal from the cathedral where we're heading next over to the Domplein, Cathedral Square. The Dutch love their cats. It's the ideal urban pet in these smaller cities. It's a quiet enough place that cats can just lounge around without being bothered, although sometimes they don't get along so well with the dogs passing by if it's encroaching on their territory. That's a strong cat. <laughs> you just go away, doggy. Oh! <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Have a nice day. Okay. Good job, Buster. Guarding the domestic front. We are heading for the cathedral, but first we'll look behind it at a charming smaller canal. And that'll be described for us by our local guide, Gitte Rosendahl. We're standing here at the Nieuwe Gracht, the new canal. It was built around the year 1400. And in those days, there were hardly any people living in this area. All through the ages, after 1400, houses were built. And this was always the area of the inner city for the more wealthy people because um, this is quiet here. There is hardly any traffic and there are hardly any shops. And it was also here in the Middle Ages because the, the trade hard was the Oude Gracht. There the ships came in, they were loaded and unloaded, horses and carriages, people working, lots of noise. And if a tradesman made his money on the Oude Gracht, on the old canal, he bought a house here because here it was quiet. Quiet as it's still now in our time. No shops, no restaurants, hardly any traffic. Only some people living here. Schools, university, church has main buildings here. And it's always like this at this moment. This whole construction of these cellars on the, the level under the street and under the houses is quite, it's, it's unique in the world. And we have a few kilometers of it on both sides of the Oude and the Nieuwe Gracht. <laughs> Beside a kayak or a pedal boat, you can also make a booking on a small electric boat. And only electric boat, uh, are, boats are allowed to be here, not with a gas oil motor or something like that, because it makes too much noise. It has to be silent. And then it's possible to go here with a boat like this. And this boat is small enough to pass in the small canal and also to pass under the lower bridges and you can make 
uh, an arrangement with a group or something, or uh, you can have something to eat or drink on board of, the, of, of ships like this, but you can also book it individually and you have a tour and so you have a great impression of a beautiful part of the old city. We'll hear a lot more from Gitta in a different segment of our visit to Utrecht when he takes us on an extensive walking tour. Just a couple blocks over, we're now approaching the cathedral. The short pedestrian lane leading over to the cathedral is a beautiful sight in itself. As you walk along it, you have to look up, up, up at the tower. It's the highest church tower in the Netherlands at 112 meters high right here in the heart of the oldest part of the city. We'll be plunging through that archway into the sacred domain of the cathedral in just a moment, but first a little look around this great street where you're gonna find potential for nonstop eating, drinking, and shopping. It seems it's wall-to-wall -wall eateries and drinkeries here. Then take a left just around the corner in the direction of the Tourist Information Office, the VVV. It's a great place to stop in for some free information. A pleasant walled garden is nearby called Flores Hof. It's on the location of the old Episcopal Palace that was demolished after 1850 when the Catholic Church was prohibited. And now it's a hidden gem, a small garden in the heart of the oldest part of town. A nice place to feed some lunch to your cat. Or sit on a bench and have your own picnic. Walking now through the passageway at the base of the church tower into the Dom Square, a beautiful open plaza. And there's something going on today. It's a graduation ceremony. The University of Utrecht has one of their main academic buildings just here. In the Netherlands, the class does not all graduate together. It's individual in small groups, a more intimate celebration where the family can gather. From here, there's direct access into the Dom. One door leads right into the cathedral and another door leads into the cloister where we shall start. The Utrecht Dom has got an amazing history, a tragic history. It was first built in the Gothic style starting from the year 1254 and it took them 300 years to finish building it. But then a hundred years later it was knocked down by a tornado. A big storm and it knocked down the middle portion, the nave, destroyed it completely, and they never rebuilt that part. Inside the cathedral, there are some displays that graphically illustrate what happened. Construction of the entire church was completed in 1580, and 100 years later, in 1674, the storm hit and totally wiped out the middle of the church. The tower still stands and the apse of the church is still standing, the choir, the ambulatory, the altar area, and the crossing, and the transepts are still surviving from those Gothic days. But the middle portion, the nave, is now gone, and it's a, an open square in the middle of town. It's the Domplein, and so that's actually kind of a nice place, a nice space in town, and especially with the beautiful tower of the dome still standing. You can actually walk up the steps of the tower. It's about nearly 400 steps to get up there. And they say, they say, I wouldn't know, but you have a view of all of the Netherlands on a clear day from the top. It was built, of course, as a Catholic church and then it became a Protestant church. And now it's really a wonderful sight to come in and see, even though half the church is gone, uh, you don't want to miss it because the part that's remaining is a spectacular Gothic structure. And along with the church, there is this cloister, which is a beautiful, peaceful garden space. It's the original Gothic cloister, still standing, attached to the church, the remaining part of the church. There's a cafe here. There's the nice garden with the hedges and flowers and a little fountain statue in the middle. Of course, the cloister was a place for prayer and meditation, 
and the uh, members of the clergy would generally live around and upstairs in the cloister. With this garden in the center, this is truly one of the prettiest cloisters you'll ever see. There's no admission charge to the cloister. It's a public park and the church is also free. You might give a donation if you like, a couple of euro, it's up to you, voluntary, and uh, enjoy that church interior as well as the outside. You can see the buttresses around, the flying buttresses, and of course the amazing tower. That completes our look at Utrecht for now, one of the great cities of the Netherlands.